Well, thank you, everyone, for tuning in to our program today. You may know that Family Talk is a listener-supported program, and we remain on the air by your generosity, literally. If you can help us financially, we would certainly appreciate it. God's blessings to you all. That's right, Dr. Dobson. And friend, thanks to generous listeners like you, Family Talk can reach more and more listeners with practical help and encouragement. To support Family Talk with your best gift, go online to drjamesdobson.org or call 877-732-6825. Today on Family Talk. It was the 18th century philosopher and author Edmund Burke who once said that the only thing necessary for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing. That motto is actually a Christian concept as well. Christ commands us to stand firm in our beliefs found in God's Word. Today on Family Talk, Dr. James Dobson will talk with a courageous man who has been persecuted and ridiculed for his deeply held faith in Jesus. His name is Joe Kennedy. He is a former high school football coach from Bremerton High School in Washington State who was fired by the school district for kneeling and praying after games. Following his termination, Coach Kennedy filed a discrimination lawsuit against the school, claiming they violated his First Amendment rights. Coach Kennedy's legal counsel, Kelly Shackelford from First Liberty Institute, will also join in on this conversation, explaining why they are fighting for Coach Kennedy and taking his case to the U.S. Supreme Court. With all of that said, now let's listen into their conversation, which we've entitled Bowing a Knee, Taking a Stand, on this edition of Dr. James Dobson's Family Talk. We're going to take a real hard look today at the struggle uh, to preserve religious liberty in America, especially as it relates to the public schools. And with us today are two men who are at the forefront and the front lines of that battle. And the first is a frequent guest to Family Talk. Kelly Shackelford has been here many times. He's a longtime friend of mine. He's an attorney. He's the president and CEO of First Liberty Institute, which is an organization that fights for religious liberty and things that are righteous and right, um, wherever it's uh, occurring, wherever the uh, religious freedoms guaranteed in the Constitution are being assaulted by the secular culture. And that's going on in ways that are breathtaking. And I thank God for Kelly and the work that the First Liberty Institute is doing uh, to fight that war. And uh, he's had some remarkable successes. I think, uh, Kelly, you're sitting here, I think you've had 90 percent. Uh, success with the courts. Is that right? Yeah, we have 17 years in a row. We won over 90% of our cases each year. And you're an attorney. You could have done a lot of different things with a lot more financial return. Why have you chosen to do what you're doing? Because this is what God called me to do. There's nothing greater really than to be able to use your gifts in the exact way that God's calling you to use them, to get to help people and stand with people and really preserve the future of our country. Our country was built on religious freedom. Uh, There's just no greater honor Uh, to be able to stand next to heroes like we're going to be standing next to today, people who are willing to stand for their faith and are being attacked for it, and to be able to stand with them in the battle and win, there's, there's no greater privilege than to be able to do that. Are you encouraged or discouraged? I'm really encouraged. I mean, it doesn't matter who's president. Whether it's George Bush or Barack Obama or Donald Trump, we still win over 90 percent of our cases because this country was built on religious freedom. And if we're willing to stand for it, we're going to preserve it, but it's going to be up to us. We have to be willing to stand for it and fight for it. Well, you have become involved in a case that interests me. I've watched it in the news and have been aware of it uh, for several years, I guess going back to 2015. And uh, it's a real honor to have you here with our other guest, whose name is Joe Kennedy. Uh, He's a man of God who has been frankly, uh, persecuted and reviled for simply trying to serve his maker. With that, uh, let me introduce him. Uh, Joe, it's good to have you here. You are a football coach, uh, first and foremost, right? Yes, sir, I am. And you were an assistant football coach at uh, Bremerton High School in Washington State. 
Yeah, that is correct. Uh, I was the head coach uh, for the junior varsity and assistant coach for the varsity. So I had double duties. You're no longer doing that, and we'll explain why. Right. But uh, is it in your heart? To serve and, and to be there with our youth. That's exactly what I was called to do. That's why I was made. Let's go back, uh, what, three, four, five years or longer? How uh, long did you coach? I coached for eight years, sir. And and then you ran afoul of the policy of the uh, Bremerton School District. It was really interesting. The school district itself didn't have any policies. The only policy that they had was you cannot encourage nor discourage kids in prayer. That is the only policy that the school district has. And you didn't do that, did you? No, that was a really interesting thing. So everything came from a compliment. So it really started from something weird. And, you know, over the years, uh, eight years, I had, I don't know, two or 300 kids come through our program. And I had a lot of people that came, you know, attacking me. And they said, well, you, the kids felt pressured or, you know, you were, you were telling them they have to go out and pray. And I said, go talk to every one of them. After the game. Right after the game, the two teams would meet at midfield, shake hands, and they would go off to their, you know, different end zones or out to the crowd to do their fight songs. And I would take that opportunity just to kneel down on the 50. And thank God it started out as a quiet prayer by myself. I just took a knee, 15, 30 seconds, up, out with the team, and we were gone. That's it. That was it. 15 to 20 seconds. Yes, sir. You knelt to say what to the Lord? Just giving him thanks. Uh, I watched this movie called Facing the Giants, and it, it, it was my calling. It was where God really spoke to my life and said, I want you to come and serve. And just like in the movie, it didn't matter if we would win or lose. I was going to give him the credit, and I was going to give him the honor after every game. Now, you've been doing that for a long time. Uh, before the controversy, it, well, was it seven years going back? Yes, it was uh, in the middle of the eighth year when uh, everything started with the uh, school district, and they started questioning what I was doing, why I was doing it, and was trying to persuade me to stop doing it. So what were they telling you? You simply could not kneel and pray after the game? They started out saying we didn't want the optics of it. The whole idea of me praying, because the teams actually started coming out with me at the end. Um, both teams? Both teams, yeah. It started out with just myself. Then it was a couple kids, and every year it kind of grew. Uh, my team started inviting the other team. They started coming out. And the last year, all the teams were out there on the 50 after the game. And I would just lift up both helmets, and I would just thank God for what they just did. And it's a public high school. Public high school. After the game, right. regardless of the outcome. Right. You mentioned the word optics. Yes. They didn't like the way it looked. It, they did not like the way it looked. And it really was not the school. It wasn't the school district itself. It was their lawyers, the ones that are, were worried about everything. Well, and Kelly, there they are again, <laughs> you know, they just mess everything up. Well, I'll, and I'll tell you, you know, while these things happened, they eventually said, OK, we're worried about the kids being out there, et cetera. He said, fine, I'll just go by myself. That's how I started. That's what I did for seven and a half years. And he did that. And so literally the last act he was fired for doing was going after the game by himself to a knee 15 to 20 seconds, silently thanking the Lord. That's why he was fired. So when it comes to the legal issue, they admitted there was never any coercion of kids. They admitted that that wasn't why he was fired. What they said is, you can't ever do anything religious while you're a coach because somebody might anything. see you. Anything. Uh, so if we can see that you're praying somewhere, if we can see any of that, you can't do it. Well, and what that, about being in the lunchroom and praying before you eat? What they've ordered, that would be a violation. It would be a violation for a teacher to pray over their meal. It would be a violation for a, a, a Jewish teacher to wear a yarmulke. It, it just, it's so extreme, it's hard to even imagine. Uh, and unfortunately, you know, he, Coach Kennedy's in the Ninth Circuit, which is the most liberal federal court of yeah. appeal circuit in the country out of San Francisco. And their ruling, which we're now on our way to the Supreme Court, their ruling said, no coach is allowed to pray in public, quote, if anyone can see them. Not just students, anyone. 
that somehow that's now a violation. That's I, kind of breathtaking, isn't it, it? What it would mean, it would sweep the country in a in a way, sort of a a religious apartheid, you know, almost a, yeah. a a religious cleansing of the country in public. And that is not this country. That is not what our constitution well, says. Well, review with us what the constitution does say. We all know that the Supreme Court struck down prayer in schools, so that's really not at issue here, no. is it? No, it's uh, the constitution's real simple. It, it says that number one, you have the right of free speech as a citizen, which Coach Kennedy is. Number two, you have a right to free exercise of religion. And then it says, however, uh, the government is not to establish religion for other people. And, of course, that didn't happen here. They admitted there was no coercion of anybody. Uh, And so what they're having to essentially kind of stretch and argue is that when Coach Kennedy, uh, you know, if he has like a coaching shirt on and he prays, that somehow people in the general public uh, will think, oh, the government is telling me to do what Coach Kennedy is doing, (laughs) instead of recognizing that's That's obviously— That's ridiculous. Yeah, that's his faith. That's him praying. The school district's not out there. The board's not out there praying. Uh, This is one man exercising his faith. There's an old case called Tinker, and one of the principles it lays out, it's about 1969, says, you know what? In this country, neither teachers nor students leave their First Amendment rights at the schoolhouse gate. They still are American citizens. To have a right to live out their faith and treating people like their faith is somehow now pornography is not the United States of America. But that's what's being attempted here. And I'm just thankful Coach Kennedy has been willing to stand against all these attacks. And as he told our board when we had our last board meeting, he said, look, I know what's happened at the Ninth Circuit, but I understand the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. And we're on our way to the Supreme Court, and uh, we still plan to win this thing. You think you are? Well, I feel real confident if the court takes our case, but the court gets to choose what cases it takes. And so we really need a lot of prayer uh, for Coach Kennedy in this case because this is going to affect every coach uh, and way beyond every coach, really everybody who works or connects to the government across the country and their religious freedoms and what that means. Today is June 21st, which is relevant to the Supreme Court. Explain how. Uh, we're filing tomorrow in the United States Supreme Court, so it's a great that's time to pray. That's the last day. That's when everything starts. Uh, our briefs, I say brief, they're 50 pages long, <laughs> you know, essentially. Uh, but uh, our brief is going into the Supreme Court. Uh, it's really called a cert petition, but it's going into the Supreme Court. The other side will then respond 30 days later. We will then reply to that after that, and then the court will decide whether they're going to take Coach Kennedy's case and really, it's an important case for the entire country. It's the only case I know of that President Trump tweeted about twice when he was a candidate. Really? Coach Kennedy. And he saw Coach Kennedy in a room once, and he pointed him out, and he said, this should not happen in our country. So this is a really important case. I think most people know about this case probably more than any religious liberty case in the country. It's a real battle uh, uh, about the future and the culture. Uh, I'll tell you two quick vignettes that I think are powerful. The local uh, editorial writer in the newspaper wrote an article about Coach Kennedy and said, I'm an agnostic, but if my child was old enough, this is the coach I would want for my my child. Is that right? Because he knew his heart and how Coach Kennedy was going to need to thank God for the privilege of coaching these young men. How can that be something now that we want to stop? Uh, The other thing that I thought was really encouraging for our country is when Coach Kennedy went down that last time by himself, he waited until the fight song started because he knew his kids would be singing the fight song and he didn't want them to get in trouble to be with him. So he went by himself to his knee to say that prayer. He bowed his head and he felt like when he was down there that something was happening around him and he went, oh no, the kids have come up here, they're gonna get in trouble. And when he opened his eyes, it wasn't the kids. It was the other team, their coaches and their players. They knew what he was going through, and they all came. They put their arms around him, and they were praying for Coach Kennedy. Joe, you prayed that last time when everything kind of reverberated from there. Had you been told, don't do this again? Yes, by everyone. You had been given specific instructions not to kneel and pray for 15 to 20 seconds. Yeah, and they said that that would end my career. My job was in jeopardy over it. You really knew what was at stake. Absolutely. Yeah, you might walk out of there without a job. Without my job, without my team, 
leaving these kids that I've had for years. You know, I've had three sets of families come through the, you know, the the oldest brother, the middle brother, the youngest brother come through there and I've coached them all. I've I've raised these kids with my kids cuz my kids go to that school. You know, not very many of us are really called upon to pay a price for our faith. We say that we're, you know, willing to die for uh, Christ and I'm sure most of us would. Uh, but in everyday life, when it comes right down to it, when your job, you're supporting your family and your reputation as a coach and in the community, uh, you had a lot on the line, didn't you? I absolutely did. I met with a lot of people over the years. But while this was going on, I met with uh, one of the guys who was a local uh, atheist uh, group. He was the president. He wanted to meet with me. And he said, you did what Peter could not do. He asked, you know, do you know Jesus? And three times he denied him. Well, he said, you're like that. The school district told you three times to turn your back on God, and you didn't. And I was like, whoa, you know, I mean, this is coming out of an atheist mouth. So, Joe, who are you? How long have you been a Christian? Oh, when I got married. So only about 13 years. It was after I got married. How would you come to know Christ? Uh, a lot of patience from my wife and God's patience with me. Uh, I was in a Christian boy's home when I was a young kid. I, I was one of those real troubled youths. And the seeds were planted, but they really didn't grow. You know, it was, So you didn't grow up in a Christian environment? Uh, my parents were Catholic, but I didn't live with them. I was in and out of group homes and foster homes. So I, I was kind of on my own. Man, with all of those disadvantages perceived disadvantages. Uh, how did you get the guts to stand up in front of the whole hierarchy of the school system and look them in the face and say, I'm going to have to do what I have to do? It was like puzzle pieces. And, you know, God has been in my life and putting the pieces together. And I never understood them. But all the fights, all the trouble, all the hardship that I went through in my life was gearing me up for that moment. And I had that choice. So, it was because I, I have been a fighter my whole life. I've been trained to fight. And it was either turn my back and run or I stand up and fight. And that was an easy decision for me. Even though I was going to lose everything, it was very easy because God's been in my life this whole entire time and everybody else has been in my life supporting yeah, me. Pretty easy for you. I don't think many Christians would do it, you know, especially if it meant financial difficulty and not having a job and all that. Uh, is this, Kelly, why you took this case and why you're doing what you're doing? It's a privilege to stand next to people like Coach Kennedy. I don't know, it just really hit me in my, in my soul that God wanted to use this case to speak to the country. Are you willing to go to a knee well, like Well, he Coach got Kennedy? tremendous publicity, didn't I, he? It has. It's well, been... Where has that gone? What national television or oh it's been everywhere yeah. as he said he he literally will go in public and everybody knows who he is i mean you just don't see cases like that i just really felt like i was going to use this case as a way to really challenge every christian we're in a different culture in this country than it used to be and so the question that we all have to ask is are you willing to take a knee like coach kennedy if it means costing you everything are you willing and and are we going to make it to where coaches like this are not allowed to be on a team. These are the coaches we dream for and pray for. Yeah. And it's so upside down that this is the guy we're running off. And I think coaches around the country, in fact, they're filing briefs. In this case, some of the top coaches around the country, they're all joining a brief that will really? be filed. Yeah, they're saying this can't happen. Uh, so I, I think it's a great wake-up call for the whole country. Everybody gets this. It's pretty simple, and it's a way to kind of talk about what kind of future we're going to have in religious freedom. Uh, tomorrow, when you petition the court to take this case to the Supreme Court, uh, what what are you going to say? Well, there's a lot of things to say, but really one of the technical things you argue in the cases is that there is a conflict. The court doesn't just correct error. It When they have one case that says one thing, one place, and one case that says something different, the other— then the law kind of is changing based upon where you are, and the court can't really allow that. So they, as a Supreme Court, make sure the law is uniform. Yes. In this case, there was another case in Washington that went in state court, 
and went all the way to their Supreme Court, and they held the exact opposite than they did to Coach Kennedy. They said that, no, coaches are allowed to do this. So even in the state of Washington right now, you've got the state court saying one thing about the Constitution and the federal court, the Ninth Circuit, saying the opposite. So if you're in Washington, you're not sure which one's the law. Uh, And, of course, it also, though, affects the whole country in dramatic ways. I mean, this is every school district in the country is going to look at this and it's going to affect whether they muzzle their employees. And, And really, it doesn't have to be just limited to school. The decision was if anyone from the general public can see you, it's a violation of the law for you to ever do anything religious. Well, that affects that every. That can't stand. I yeah, mean, it, it, that cannot. That smells like a Ninth Circuit decision, doesn't it's, it? That's why I feel you know the odds are great. If the Supreme Court takes a Ninth Circuit case, it's overturned at a very high rate. We just got to get them to take it, and that's why I would encourage people to really be in prayer as we file this tomorrow, because that's going to be the key is prayer. And, and I would tell people also if they want to send a note of encouragement to Coach Kennedy. Uh, it's tough to stand alone in these cases. He's not talking about it, but I'm telling you it's tough. Uh, some people turn their back on you, friends, people. Uh, it's a hard, lonely well, road. Such division in the country and such anger, tremendous anger, especially against anything Christian. People need to send him a note, encourage him, lift him up. We'll have that on our website at firstliberty.org, but I know Family Talk will have a link where people can click on it. Send Coach Kennedy a note. Tell him you're praying for him. And be praying about the Supreme Court because this is something that is going to affect every person in this country. I mean, certainly everybody with kids or grandkids, but I think it really affects everybody. Well, I would like people to write a letter to him or a note to him. Send it to us, drjamesdobson.org, and we'll see to it that both of you get uh, this mail. And would that be an encouragement to you? Oh, Joe? absolutely. And uh, prayers for my wife and, and all the people in Bremerton. It's a hardworking town, and those kids need some yeah. good role models. Do you feel God's presence in your life and in what you're trying to do here? Oh, do you feel he's absolutely. urging you to do this? There's absolutely no doubt in my mind whatsoever. And, you know, my whole thing about being a Christian is love God and love others. That's my whole philosophy on Christianity. I feel at that miserably every day. So God gives me an opportunity every single day. So anybody who, who prays for me and my family, I can't even tell you how much I appreciate well, it. I know that you're not doing this to be lauded or thanked or held up. But let me tell you that I admire you, Thanks, and uh, that's why you're here today. I appreciate you coming and and sharing this story uh, because people have read about it. There's a picture of you kneeling at that 50-yard line, and students are around you. That's gone viral, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been everywhere, and it's so weird because, I mean, I'm just a high school football coach, you know. Yeah. It's just weird to— Everybody knows about the case, so you can see God's working in this because it sure isn't me. Well, Kelly asked that our listeners be in prayer for you, and we uh, we join with you, and uh, we'll follow it very carefully. Uh, Kelly, thank you for what you're doing. Uh, you know, you could be doing a lot of other things, and the Lord has led you to defend righteousness, religious liberty, and keep up the good work. And keep us informed of this case as it moves through the Supreme Court. Absolutely. It's it's a privilege to do it. And uh, thank you for covering this because so many people in the country probably wouldn't even know these things are going on if not for you getting the word out on the big battles of the day. Well, if we don't use our First Amendment rights, we will lose them, Amen. right? Amen to that. Amen. We have to stand up and be counted. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Kelly. Um, Before we go, I just want to remind everybody of what we said during the body of the program. Today, Thursday, is June 21st. Be in prayer for uh, Coach Joe Kennedy and his family, and pray for Kelly Shackelford and all of our friends and associates at First Liberty Institute who are filing this petition with the Supreme Court to ensure that all of us retain our First Amendment rights to pray in public.
You are listening to Dr. James Dobson's Family Talk and a conversation Dr. Dobson had with Coach Joe Kennedy and Attorney Kelly Shackelford. If you'd like to stay informed on the latest in this case, there are two places you can go. The first is the broadcast page at drjamesdobson.org. There you'll find a link for First Liberty's website where you can read more about Coach Kennedy and write notes of encouragement to him and his family through this difficult time. That's drjamesdobson.org, and then click onto the Broadcast tab. The second way you can follow this case is by reading the blog from our new Director of Public Policy, Jenna Ellis. She will explain the case being presented to the Supreme Court and offer her opinions on the outcome. You can find her thoughts on this case, along with other entries on religious liberty issues, by clicking on the Blog tab at drjamesdobson.org. I'm Roger Marsh. Thanks for listening today. Make sure you join us again tomorrow to hear the incredible testimony of Joseph Rojas, lead singer for the band Seventh Day Slumber. That's coming up next time right here on Dr. James Dobson's Family Talk. Family Talk is not associated with Focus on the Family.